Hey guys, Andrew from Crafted Coast Tour Company here with the latest in our little homebrew series that I'm putting together. So today I'm going to be making a Morgan's Pacific Pale Ale. I'm just going to show you guys what the can looks like. So this is just one of the malt extracts that I bought at the homebrew shop. Uh, it says Morgan's Pacific Pale Ale, a rich amber colour with a full malt character a highly refreshing woodsy hop aroma and clean bite. It doesn't actually tell you on the packaging what type of hops and stuff are used, you know, what type of malts and stuff are used in it. You basically just grab it, read the instructions and rip into it. So normally when you get these uh, extract kits, uh, what you would normally do is maybe grab another malt extract or a kilo of dextrose to use um, as the the sugar uh, to create the, the alcohol. Um, what I'm doing today is something a little bit different. So delving into the finer dark arts of, of brewing, um, trying to be a big boy. What I have is from a local homebrew shop, some dry malt extract. So this is extra malt, light dried malt, especially for brewing, vacuum dried, GMO free, made from European barley product of Wanda AG Switzerland best before March 2020 which is just over a year away so perfect to use so I'm going to be using this in the beer today and see how it turns out normal normally uh, my brother and I just use dextrose or I think it's called brewers helper or something like that um, in our beers that we've made so far so I'm trying something a little bit different so we'll see see what happens that's what this is all about experimentation um, so yeah I've got the the extract, uh, the can of extract, I've got the dry malt extract. Um, so usually, well, not usually, but always, these kit beers will come with, if, if I open the top, without bumping the microphone too much. So I've just taken the lid off, and you can see on top here, it, it comes with its own little packet of yeast. Um, the recommendation from everyone is to throw that away and get something a little bit better. Um, so, what I'm going to be using is the Safail US05 um, dry ale yeast. Characteristics: American ale yeast producing well-balanced beers with a very clear, with a very clear crisp end palate. Sedimentation medium, final gravity low to medium. So. Everyone recommends these Safail yeasts, so I'll be using this. And then I'm going to be trying something extremely different for what we normally do with these simple homebrew kits. I've got myself a couple of muslin bags and I'm going to be dry hopping this beer with a mixture of USA Mosaic and some hops that I haven't heard of before. I'm very new to this. Um, I do drink a lot of craft beer and take people on craft beer tours, but I'm still learning a lot as I go. Uh, so I'm going to be using this New Zealand Taihiki. It's a Cascade cultivar, a dual purpose hop with citrus, grapefruit and lime characters, a personality of its own typically employed in New World style pale ales with creative brewers using in late editions in summer style, summer style ales. It has a forward aroma and oils profile giving a refreshing finish. And if you know anything about brewing, you know all about mosaic hops. So yeah, I'm going to be blending the mosaic and the taihiki. This will be my first ever time dry hopping. Um, before I get stuck into the brew now, I'm just going to quickly read up on the timeline in terms of when I um, add those uh, hops to the fermentation. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. It's time to get stuck into it. Um, this is my little brewing station that we've got set up at our house here. I've uh, got the ferment tank over here. Um, basically, you just read the instructions properly, get your temperatures right, pour everything in, mix it up, do the lid up, put it somewhere dark, which is our, our garage is a nice dark, cool spot. So we'll get it all mixed up, chuck the yeast in, to put the lid on and That'll be it, and I'll uh, try and film a little bit as we go. So, uh, brewing a beer would never be complete without drinking a beer on the way as you go. So, I've got one of my favorite beers 
from here on the Gold Coast. It's the Black Ops Pale Ale. Um, I would love to be able to brew a beer that comes out somewhere like this in my lifetime. Uh, it's seriously one of my favorite beers. Um, and I'd love, yeah, like, like I said, I'd love to try and make something like this one day. If I could hold a pale ale in my hand that I make in my garage, it's got that carbonation, that color, the aromas and flavor of this, I'd be stoked. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into the brewing process. Okay, so what I'm doing here is adding about two liters of hot water to the fermentation tank, uh, getting it all in there to the kettle, and then I'll be adding the uh, malt extract once I've got all that water in there. That's done. Just double check that the tap's all done up, nice and tight. Have a quick drink. Ah, that's better. All right, so I've had this can of extract sitting in the sink of hot water to loosen it all up. So just get my can opener out of the sanitizer here. And yeah, I probably should have sanitized the can as well before I did this, but oh well, what are you gonna do? Uh, hopefully everything will be all right. So yeah, we'll get the can open and pop the can opener back in the sanitizer just in case I need to use it again. I shouldn't, but okay. So now I got my spoon, make sure it's all had contact with the sanitizer. Yep, that's right. Double checking that I'm in shot, it's all good. All right, so now it's time to add this can of malt extract. That's what it looks like. It smells delicious, nice, thick, and syrupy. I probably should have left it in the uh, the hot water for a little bit longer just to loosen it up. It's, it was pretty, still pretty viscous. Uh, so yeah, so we get all of that scraped out. You want to try and get as much of this stuff out of the can as possible. You don't want any of this stuff to go to waste. You want maximum flavor, maximum taste. So that's what I'm doing with my spoon. Just trying to get as much out as I can. It's super sticky stuff too. So make sure you got some some rags and some towels and stuff on hand um, and try not to spill it everywhere. Try not to get it on your walls and your floor and all that sort of stuff because it's pretty sticky, pretty hard to get off. So yeah, here we go. I've just given it a little bit of a rinse with some hot water to get the last little bit out. And we'll give it a little bit more of a scrape. And I think I'm trying to get some stuff off the lid here as well. So yeah, you just got to make sure you try and get as much of this stuff into your, your fermentation tank as possible. So now I'm just getting the dry malt extract in. Uh, some people use dextrose or brewer's finisher. I'm using the dry malt extract this time. Now it's time to stir the absolute shit out of it. We want to make sure that all of the ingredients are mixed, that that dry malt extract is dissolving in the in the hot water with the, um, the malt extract and the hops. And yeah, give it a really good stir. Get a lot of air into it. Make sure that th everything's dissolving and the aeration um, yeah. Okay, now you can see that I've added the uh, the 20, 20 odd liters to make it up to 23 liters of cold water. I'm um, giving it another stir so I can try and even the temperature out. I've got a temperature gauge stuck to the side of the, um, the ferment tank here. And so yeah, I've just given it a stir, even the temperature out, check the temperature, just double checking what temperature I should be at. I think it's somewhere, it says somewhere between uh, 20 two to 25 degrees and this is right on around about 23 degrees 24 degrees so it's time to get the yeast in probably should have sanitized the packet but oh well i'm new to this so yep get that yeast in there so this is what it should look like you don't want to stir it you just pour the yeast on top let it sit on top of the uh the, the wort and now it's time i can you can see here you can see the temperature is somewhere around about 23 24 degrees and now it's time to get the lid on, get it nice and tight, get the airlock uh, sanitizer. It's been sitting in sanitizer the whole time, so it's all good. It goes into the bung, and then I get a little bit of my leftover sanitized water, pop that in the airlock. That creates the airlock, and I give it a quick look. All good. All right, guys, that's it. The beer is done. It's uh, all sealed up. You can see behind me, um, I've got the airlock in. The yeast has been pitched. And now it's the waiting game. So uh, typically for this kind of pale ale, we'd be looking at around about a five to seven day fermentation. 
it's going to depend on the temperature. Uh, we want it to stay around about 20 degrees uh, for maximum fermentation um, efficiency of fermentation. Uh, at the moment, the temperature is fluctuating between around about 14 degrees at night up to around about 22, 23 degrees during the day. Um, in the garage, the temperature should hopefully be pretty stable. So uh, we should be looking for a, a pretty spot on uh, five to seven day ferment. Um, what I'm going to be doing is adding uh, 50 grams of each of the hops after four days and I'll leave the hops in there for around about somewhere between 48 to 72 hours um, and that by that stage the fermentation should be done and yeah then it's time to uh, to bottle it and let it sit for a couple of weeks uh, before we before we try it so the last thing that you do before you pack up is you take a hydrometer reading. This is to get your specific gravity. Uh, this is where some of the science and maths starts to come into it, which I'm not very good at, but there's plenty of good stuff out there on the internet for me to read up. And I have plenty of friends who brew very good beer that I can talk to as well. Uh, so the OG, the, the, the original reading um, before fermentation begins on my beer is a specific gravity of just over uh, 1.0.5 so if we look at the uh, the chart here it gives like the the um, brewing kit gives you a little fermentation guide so you can sort of figure out approximately where your beer is going to be so 1.05 to 1.055 so this is probably around about ju yeah just over 1.05 we'll be looking at an ABV of somewhere between 6.3 to 7%. So it's going to be quite a, a heavy beer. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, the good thing that you can also do at the end of the process, once you've taken your reading, this is per perfectly fine to drink. Have a little taste. It's quite nice. Uh, compared to the first one that we did, that's actually, I'm really happy with that. A little bit sweet, obviously, with the sugar in it. The... Um, the dry malt extract but yeah that's it so now it's just the waiting waiting game um, I will probably do the, the dry hopping process as well in another short little video um, and yeah then we've got the bottling and the sampling hopefully not too far away cheers for watching guys uh, check out the other videos on the channel would really appreciate it if you guys hit that subscribe button a couple of like buttons here and there um, and yeah, if you're ever on the Gold Coast and you want to go and visit some craft breweries, hit me up. Let's do it. Cheers.